What's up guys, welcome to Blake's Garage. Today I'm working on the F82 M4. I need some front arrow to balance out the big old wang on this thing. No one really makes front arrow for these cars. Now, I say that in the matter of like functional front arrow. Yes, you can buy BMW original parts, GT4 front bumper, splitter, all that stuff. I think it runs you literally 10 grand. Freaking insane. Everyone else kind of just makes random stuff. I think APR does sell a splitter, but honestly, it's just a piece of carbon. Um, so I'm trying to figure something out. I'm kind of cutting out a hole for the oil cooler here. No one's really talked about this or really done this on an F8 Edge chassis that I've seen a video on at least. So here's my idea. Uh, yes, this is a skid plate, 100% recommended. As you can see, I've whacked it quite a bit of times on track and all that stuff. I mean, even down here, right? We've uh, seen a bit of scrapage, so, you know. Uh, my idea is to use this, these parts here, this, this. I'm thinking I might even go all the way back to here. I'm gonna leave enough that I can. Um, possibly make some like spacers up in this area, maybe some 3D printed spacers. And uh, then I wanna get it kind of hooked into here. This is a good support beam. You have all this aluminum crash structure stuff right here, super, super strong to attach to. Um, but this bolt hole might end up using that and maybe making like, I don't know, some sort of angle bracket. Probably gonna have to make a frame for this thing. So something uh, with the skid plate, I'm kind of gonna integrate the skid plate into the splitter and I'm trying to make some like, you know, functional downforce on the front. Uh, for now, I'm gonna do it with some cardboard, doing a little CAD right here. Uh, I got this piece, I'd recommend getting a nicer piece, but it's kinda all I got. Uh, I have some wood over here, got some brand new tires for the M4. Nanking R1s, chilling, uh, 315 and 295s, so yeah, ready for, is it next Friday? Heck yeah. So I'll be slapping those on ASAP, but mock something up with this wood here and then supposedly on monday i have some uh kind of like aluminite structure stuff coming in so i'm hoping i can just mock something up with this cheap wood and cardboard cardboard first transfer it to wood kind of get it you know figured out in wood and then when that other stuff comes in i'll cut it out and do it uh do it that way make it nice i'm just gonna go ahead and pop off the bumper went ahead and just took off all these little uh screws in the front here there's a bunch of little screws. I don't know what they were. T30s, T25, T28, something like that. Um, then to get the bumper off, you got to remove a couple of things here. Um, I know there's like a button up in here. So yeah, I'm just going to take a couple things off, pop the bumper off, and then I'm going to throw it down here. Kind of when we got that kind of cut out, I'll cut out a general template and then I'll work on mounting and uh, support. Everyone that asks how I attach my front lip on my M4, now I actually don't do this off of the car, but what I do is I'll slip a piece of aluminum up here, right here in between the bumper. That way you're not just straight mounting to the ABS. And then I'll throw a couple tech screws through it. Boom, 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 boom. You can see these ones didn't go as deep. Uh, need to get a better bite on those. Doing a little bit of spring cleaning you know it's got your track rubber stuck in here and oh man that's a little bit beat up but i gotta vacuum this all out just a nice little cleaning of the rubber bits out of my uh, front vents so i went ahead and traced out the front of the bumper like this uh on the piece of cardboard and i poked a hole and another piece of cardboard. I honestly just kind of guessed here and I ran this along here with a pin in the side and then boom, have kind of the perfect spacing right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this uh, piece out right here to the extended part. And then I think I'm just gonna go ahead and transfer it over to the wood. Right now, I just kind of have this thing laid out. That's probably farther than I had it before. The more you bring it back, the more it kind of like sticks out, right? So you have more on the sides as well. So you'd have to kind of taper that in or whatever but honestly i can do some some sort of arrow stuff on the side there so pretty cool uh, i'm going to be running track class so i can go pretty aggressive on the uh the front as far as the oil cooler cutout goes i kind of have this template here and i made this template on the car before i took it off so that this little hole here lines up perfect with the oil cooler 
and to kind of just line this up right there to the front of the lip as you can see there and then that is the hole now that back side of the hole needs to be a little bit straighter whatever i'm gonna make it a little bit smaller yeah and now i can just trace that out for the oil cooler cut out got the jigsaw gonna cut this out now now i'm just cutting it in the grass because it's easy i can just go right into the grass no big deal so as far as a little progress goes here an absolute must on any track car or any f8x is a skid plate as you can see here i've used it quite a few times definitely right there probably on some curbing and that is to protect this guy right here the oil cooler which will basically total out your car in about i don't know 20 seconds or so uh if you whack that bad boy on something so uh then going on to here so i basically transferred that over to this spot for the opening and then i also transferred the skid plate holes kind of over to here so for this so my idea is basically using these holes I'm gonna get some extended bolts. I'm gonna make some spacers so that I have a nice like tight fit. I'm get to, gonna get some longer bolts and then I'll kind of bolt this whole piece in the back on there. That way it's like, I don't know, it's really secure because um, I'm paying for it. So why, why stop it right there when I can kind of just go all the way under and do the complete belly. And then I gotta make a structure, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this stuff kind of back on the car. I have a lot of good areas like right here that I could use, you know, there's even like, bolts right here the zert fittings off the aluminum I, I think you can definitely make something work pretty easily um and then for the side bracing i need to have like something coming off here maybe kind of something along the lines of this that i can tension up and it has some cable so that if it squishes the tension comes off but as a downward pressure it's keeping it nice and tight you can see in these pictures right here, I just temporarily mounted up that board to the underneath of the car, just kind of getting the level right and kind of figuring out where it all goes. And then I got the new board, forgot to film it. So I went ahead and picked up, Here it is. this is like an Alumalite stuff. I got it from a sign shop. I had to call around all of the sign shop about a week to get. So it's aluminum on top and on bottom and then it is smashed and impregnated kind of like a cardboard style i traced this out right i traced out my template and now i'm gonna go ahead and cut this out kind of mounted it up on the car already but with that one it's super floppy so i need to do it with something real so i'm gonna make this happen so this is how it's cut now the aluminum stuff it went through super easy with a jigsaw uh the stuff is very very solid let me show you an example real quick so i just had this piece and I was just kind of curious, you know, like how strong is it, right? Like, let's say I put it right here. I can legit stand on it. It's not snapping in half. It is bending, mind you, but you know, 180 pounds, just in that little area, which is pretty good. Um, also, you know what I kind of forgot is um, there's a different direction. So you can do it that direction or this direction right this direction's even firmer depending on how you did the veins so here's some pictures i took sorry guys i was kind of bad on the filming on this i was literally trying to bust it out the night before but that's how the piece turned out right there you can see it's all cut out i got the holes drilled in it and everything threw that thing on the bumper now i'm kind of trying to figure out how to mock this thing up i put the bolts in the back kind of put it on there that bumper sitting there temporarily and now I kind of show a better view. Um, you can see this popped off. I went ahead and traced out the line up on the top so I can get the mounting position. This is how I have it down here at the bottom. I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna trim some off the back just cause I don't know how that's gonna do for ground clearance. And if I should just kind of stop it right here, I'd probably still have better ground clearance and keep the original uh, little tray doing its thing. But anyways, this is looking pretty dang good. I'm happy with it. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this off. Kind of drew a line for these pickup points right here. I'm gonna go ahead and pop those in, kind of figure it out, and then start kind of reinforcing this area. And then I also need to get a, make a little bracket for literally right inside of there. You can see that little aluminum piece. I need to have like a little square piece that I can kind of bolt that into and kind of rig that up. Let me think about how that's gonna attach to the bottom though. Yeah, so I need to do more of these, I guess. Kind of do more of these things right here on the bottom i'll probably do two of these on each side 
And then that's gonna sandwich on top of this L bracket kind of thing. So this will be between the situation there. This will go like this. And then I'll have to just bolt that in. So I need to get some smaller bolts. Uh, so I gotta remember to do that. Couple of big pictures here. You can see it's just sitting on there. That's what it kind of looked like on the back. And those are some skids. All right, a little bit of progress update. Uh, we got this thing mounted up. I'm pretty close now. Um, I went ahead and mounted up those rails right there. Those turned out really good. And then I got these little pieces of an angle. So all I gotta do now is drill a hole through the side, two holes on each, two holes over on this side. Um, I do have these little brackets hooked up and I'm kind of checking tension. These can be, I guess, a little bit tighter on this side or maybe a little looser. I don't know. I need to kind of figure out how I'm mounting up the bumper. Actually, I think I need to notch just a little bit out of the top piece right there. That would kind of make a little bit more room there. And then I think I'm gonna need to notch just a little bit out of the uh, inside piece up there as well so that I can spin kind of the turret. Uh, this one, can I spin it? I don't know. It's pretty tight. Yeah, I can kind of spin it, but honestly, it's it's pretty good. So that's how it is right now. I'm gonna bolt it in on the bottom, uh, get that kind of bolted up. And it's looking pretty dang good. I'm, I'm happy with it right now. So this is the bracket that I came up with. Just drilled two holes in the top there. I made these holes bigger so that I could bolt this in. This basically just goes on this mount right here. Um, and I got the proper angle. I'm using that pickup and that bolt hole. It goes literally like this and then screws on. And then on the side here, you can see I got these two holes. That is where these two holes on the side here bolt in. So I'm gonna bolt that in. It'll be good to go. Uh, eventually I'll do like a quick disconnect, but I didn't have time to purchase one of those. Well, I did, but I didn't do it. So, yep, this is what we're going with. A couple of last second update pictures. Like I said, I literally finished this uh, the night before I was up till like 1.30 in the morning, mounting that thing up. Then after that, I went to the uh, tire shop, got my tires uh, mounted up the, the day, I think this was the day before. So this was like a Thursday and I'm driving out for a Friday track day. Uh, got those from my buddy Mark, so that was really nice of him to let me get those. And then I ended up wrapping the whole front lip in just some carbon fiber wrap. Uh, this is like vivid carbon fiber wrap. It looks pretty good. Uh, I didn't do the most amazing job on the bottom there. I just kind of tucked it under. And then I did put those little skids on there to hopefully help with any sort of uh, track abuse with curbing or anything that those would hit first and grind and not destroy everything. So yeah, overall, I think it turned out really good. Uh, in a second here, you guys will see, I'm putting a little bit of weight on the thing. I really think that I can fully stand on it. I didn't do it because I don't want to mess it up, but uh, you know, some front rails or some front rods, I should say, might be a good addition in the future, but I didn't notice any flexing on track. And now let's go to the button willow video. And this is basically my PB lap right here. So I think third lap of the day, decently open uh, as far as traffic goes. You can see I got, what is that, an S2000 up here. So I am plus 45 before that turn. So like I am gaining on my PB. I kind of got a little bit slow through the uh, on-ramp section here. Coming through cotton corners here pretty decent a little bit of understeer in the front of the car if you guys can kind of see a little bit of rear rotation coming over there bump it over the exit of cotton corners coming right through here this is a fun spot I'm trying to stay wide open so right here the arrow is working pretty good the car felt pretty good too i need a little bit more front grip right here you can see i'm kind of washing out getting a little bit of understeer through bus stop um, which is kind of making me just not feel super confident through that area through riverside watch I'm getting quite a bit of push okay I'm getting quite a bit of understeer here i don't know if you guys can fully tell 
but it's just hard to maintain the speed. I want to go faster through there. It's just the car's not doing it for me. Over Phil Hill right here, I need to hit this area faster as well, but that day, as you can see, there's a ton of dirt and everything, so I wasn't trying to send it right there and go off. It's a really easy spot to go off. Uh, right here into Sweeper. I was also hoping that this area with the arrow was going to help a little bit more. It felt a little bit better, but I think I actually need to spring up in the rear of the car. Just get it to rotate a little bit more. It still feels like I'm just pushing a bunch and I don't know, the arrow thing is to, it's just a totally different animal with no arrow. It's a lot easier to tune suspension without arrow in my opinion. So coming right out of Sunset, decent amount of speed through here. You can see I'm plus or negative 14, negative 15, so I'm getting on that PB and boom, I tick over the line at a 155.03. I'm actually kind of upset because I really wanted that 54, but hey, I, you know, it's it's another PB, so what can I say? You know, can't be mad with PBs, right? Uh, anyway, so we're coming up on, what is this? I think this is a K-swapped um, Miata right here, so passing that guy, and just kind of go on to that next lap. Uh, again, I think because of the traffic, you can see I'm already like a second behind. This this is what happens on this track on button below the traffic. I mean, as soon as you get traffic, your lap's done unless it's in a good spot to uh, to get people. So you can see a little bit of over the oversteer there, out of cotton corners. A little bit of oversteer there. I'm past this dude um, coming through here. Now see the speedo down on my car, sitting like a hundred and I don't know, hundred and eight, and then down here through bus stop right around 70 79 i know i can go 80 plus through there i need to keep sending it through there and just it's kind of the setup so if i'm kind of pushing on the outside of that area maybe it's one of those things where i need to go a little bit slower in and by that i just mean slow down so i can get the direct line and just keep and maintain the speed over it instead of, instead of trying to send it in super super fast uh right here basically a braking zone uh, the track was actually oiled down because that should not have happened and we went off and I wanted to show this in the video Because well, this is a splitter video. Look what we just did. We just went off on sweeper and Actually the front splitter was perfectly fine So I was really happy about that and how everything worked out. So anyways guys Thanks a lot for watching the video uh, post down below what you think about the front splitter if you guys have made anything, let me know what you've made. And thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon, later, and wrench on.